Ray cheated of a place in the final by injury. Dave Jessup was in second place along with Dennis Sigalos. John Davis was fourth and the intercontinental champion Chris Morton was fifth. The lineup: Larry Ross on the inside, Michael Lee in blue, Bobby Schwartz from America and Reading in white and Andy Graham on the outside, yellow and black. Heat number four. Schwartz comes around the outside of Larry Ross. So Michael Lee leads heat number four. Bobby Schwartz is in second place. Third, it is Larry Ross. And the back is Andy Graham. Here's Michael Lee, of course, uh, a world finalist who qualified through the Intercontinental final. He's not too comfortable there. Not uh, too happy, or at least reported not to be too happy with his Czechoslovakian Java equipment. And he's got Bobby Schwartz right on his tail. And Boogaloo is a forceful performer and never knows when he's beaten. Really, uh, they've had some trouble on the third corner there. The red light's on. And it is, in fact, Andy Graham who's gone down out of our picture. He's OK. He's up on his feet. And there he is there. You can just see he's back there on the third corner. He fell all on his own. But the referee has stopped it. He'll have to exclude Andy Graham. There it is. And oh dear, that was an unlucky number to be drawn to. Number 13. Not proving too fortunate for him there in Heat 4. Well, we do really have uh, another of the tropical rainstorms which have been such a feature of our so-called summer. It's raining quite heavily. And you just hope that the weather will break. It makes conditions awfully sticky for speedway riders. Remember, of course, they're hitting the corners around 60, 70 miles an hour. You can see it's coming down pretty steadily and it is really going to make it sticky out there on this Wimbledon circuit. The restart then of heat number four. Interesting to see how the rain is going to affect that top surface. Already we've lost Larry Ross, who is aggravated with a knee injury and isn't prepared to take the risk on this surface. Michael Lee is in grid two in the blue helmet colour and the all-weather man Bobby Schwartz out there in white uh, in grid number three. So heat four, I think we might go a little gingerly into that first turn. Richardson, the reserve, who leads it alone now. Michael Lee is trying to run down the inside of him, but it hasn't slowed him up very much. Schwartz is down through the fence on the third corner. And again, we have got the red light on. Schwartz is up, and I dare say he's saying something very, very rude. There he is, looking a bit disgusted with life. Bobby Schwartz astride the fence. Well, what did happen to Bobby Schwartz? He's out there in the white helmet colour, you can see. And under him hard comes Michael Lee. And yes, it does look as though Michael Lee has taken his foot right out from under him. I think that's what he must have been remonstrating about. He's gone down and through the fence. But, well, that's a controversial one because our slow-mo would indicate that Michael Lee might have been the guilty one there. Well, there we do have Bobby Schwartz, and he's making his point very forcibly to the referee, Lou Strip. We might just try to pick up what he says. Maybe he keeps it clean. Ladies and gentlemen. Bobby, can we show you what happened on the slow-mo? What did the referee say there, by the way? He said he made his decision and that was it. And uh, you got to do what the referee says, don't you? All right. Well, can, can, we're going to show you now what happened on that slow-mo. Here we go, Bobby. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. And Mike, De Colin is coming in here, and then here comes Michael. And it seems to have taken my leg from what I saw right there. You see? There goes my leg out, which just took me right down. And the referee says, no, that's not what happened. But as you can see there on the film, that's what did happen. So you're, you're saying that we should rerun that without Michael Lee in it? With Michael Lee in it, yes. Yeah. But that's what happened, and the referee's decision is what happens. Uh, it excludes me from the race. And Have the conditions had anything to do with it? What's it like out there? It's a bit greasy. You can see I'm full of mud. But were the conditions to blame for that, or was that straight racing? That was racing, but uh, it should have been a rerun with all three riders. Because I was taken out. 
Well, this eventful Berger Grand Prix meeting, here we go again for the third time of asking in heat number four. Only two starters now, Colin Richardson on the inside, who was leading it uh, when it was stopped for the second time. Uh, he's the reserve, remember, and a real spoiler. And Michael Lee, who, well, it looked like he was lucky to uh, escape uh, some kind of uh, reprimand from the referee for that incident. Richardson on the inside, Lee on the outside. And this time, Michael Lee has made the gate and shuts down on Richardson, allowing no room at all around the first one. That was hard, but uh, it was fair. But, uh, well, looks pretty potent tonight. Around the last two corners, at last we've got a result of heat four. A win for Michael Lee, second place Colin Richardson. Uh, the rain, thankfully, has stopped. And Michael Lee will be glad to have three points safely accumulated. We've plenty of incidents so far in this Berger Grand Prix final. And here are the leaders after two rides apiece. It's the Kings Lynn pairing Dave Jessup up there in front with Dennis Sigalos from Hull. They have six points apiece. Alan Graham from Cradley Heath has five. The holder, Scott Autry, still in the picture with three. So too has the Finnish star from Eastbourne, Kai Nimi, with Bobby Schwartz creeping into the leaderboard too. He has three. Phil Crump uh, from Victoria. A late returnee to British Speedway. He's been setting up a motorcycle business out there. Couldn't get back till June to his British League club, Swindon Robbins. Had a terribly unhappy evening. Two engine failures in his first two rides, so he'll be looking for a few points to attain respectability here as we come into heat number nine. Next to him is Bobby Schwartz, getting back in the picture after an exclusion first time out. He has three points. Steve Bastable from Birmingham has one, and Dennis Sigalos, joint leader with Kings Lynn pairing Dave Jessup and Michael Lee out on the outside. He's a very fast starter. Let's see heat nine. Again, it is Sigalos, and going around the outside of Crump, it is Bobby Schwartz. But Sigalos, his uh, starting really is a revelation here this evening. Already he's got, what, 10, 20 lengths in front here in heat number nine. Here's the way they're spacing out. Sigalos leaving, Schwartz is second. Third place, it is Phil Crump. This is the third lap. The two Americans showing uh, the way home to an Australian and English rider. And Schwartz will chase. He moves way out onto the boards there. Of course, as track conditions get stickier, it does uh, tend to discourage passing because you do get covered in wet mud if you move up onto some of these track wheels. So God, it's time to look around third win looking very sharp second place was Bobby Schwartz third was Phil Crump and after that start and it was a jet propelled getaway it was all over father shouting for Dennis Sigalos he's absolutely still as the tapes go his reflexes are razor sharp away he goes he's right across the field there looks dangerous from that angle but he was in complete command and that really was a start right out of the textbook Well, we saw him in uh, devastating style at White City, which is a big one. Hasn't been nearly so effective here. Although uh, Chris does tend to suffer from nerves early on in the big meetings. He seemed to feel he'd overcome them uh, last week in the Intercontinental Final. So with two third places, it's still possible for him to produce something out of the bag. But he's got some hot opposition here. Dave Jessup, of course, uh, knows he needs a win to catch Dennis Sigalas on the nine-point mark. He's in grid two, Colin Richardson's in grid three, and Markham Simmons, always a quality performer on the outside in yellow and black. So, heat number 10, Jessup on a track where starting has now become all important. Let's see if he makes it here in heat 10. Oh, he 
yes he does and in second place around the outside it's Simmons in third place it's Morton at the back it is Colin Richardson Jessup again as Richardson tries to bore a hole through Chris Morton tries to dislodge him off his path doesn't succeed getting tight for the second and third place is Morton now looking a bit more like his old self going around the outside of Markham Simmons sweetly slow them too much David Jessup as always looking very much at ease as he leaves heat 10 now Chris Morton like the fiery intercontinental champion we saw at White City they're really getting tight at the back but from Simmons is third and Colin Richardson is still well buzzing around angrily there but nobody is going to trouble Dave Jessup here in heat number 10 he wins it with lots of ease Three more points, two for Morton, one for Markham Simmons in third place. And it's getting tight at the top now because both Jessup and Sigalos have nine points unbeaten. And Michael Lee can join them on that mark if he wins his third ride. And we're going to see him in heat 11. And uh, as the rain begins to come down heavier again, this really is uh, awful luck. It's just uh, it's not going to stop raining. It's coming down so heavily and we are waiting now for Phil White and there is the rain and that is going to make life very difficult for these riders there's the lineup it's raining pretty heavily and that's got to slow them up the riders taking their time to settle outside grid has been quick we've seen Sigalos we've seen Schwartz really fly out of grid four let's see what Michael Lee can do in heat 11 good start he's going to get squeezed out at the first corner Michael Lee as Kenny Carter goes clear and Lee has ridden the most tremendous first couple of bends because he was squeezed out at the first corner he locked back and came up the inside of Carter and that was superb speedway in very difficult conditions Lee now leads it Carter's in second place Autry's trying to ride around the curve losing ground and there are the winning the leading pair Michael Lee tall and gawky Kenny Carter, diminutive and slightly built, the long and short of any kind of speedway situation. Michael Lee looks as though he really means business here this evening. It really was the most stupendous first couple of corners. Very brave, bold, picked his spot. And uh, he's kicking for home now here in Heat 11. Michael Lee collecting three more points, moving up to share the lead with Dave Jessup and with Dennis Sigalos. Kenny Carter finished second there, third place Scott Autry. But Michael Lee rode a bold first lap. Let's look at the start again, watch Michael Lee on the outside. As the tapes go up, you'll see he doesn't make a particularly good getaway from the tapes. The riders on the inside get clear. In fact, it was Carter on the inside and Autry. They all move to the corner and Lee gets a bit of a nudge out there as Carter goes clear. No way you'd think that Michael Lee can recover from there. But he somehow contorts himself, gets the bike back, goes through the eye of a needle here, as you can see, as Carter locks up on the outside. Autry's trying to follow him through the gap, but it's Michael Lee who really has ridden a beautiful piece of uh, track strategy there to take the lead and never look back from that point. Michael Lee, just how bad is it out there? Well, it's pretty hopeless now. As you can see, it's really pouring down with rain. It's impossible to see where you're going if you miss the start. And in the last couple of races, I believe the times have been getting two or more seconds slower. So, you know, it's, it's getting a bit uh, silly now, but we'll keep going for as long as we can. Well, it's quite interesting out the front there with uh, Dennis Segalas on nine points tonight, Dave Jessup on nine points, and you going into the next heat on nine points. Yeah, you know, I'm in with a chance still. Uh, it's pretty open, I think. You know, it's going to be between myself, Dennis Segalas and Dave Jessup. Uh, you know, providing the weather keeps uh, as it is now and doesn't get any worse, things will be okay. And Mike? Heat number 13. Still hasn't uh, eased the rain. But a race that could uh, answer one or two questions. We've got Michael Lee, who's unbeaten. He's in grid three, which has not been one of the fastest starting positions. John Davis on the inside in red. Well, he can gate. And when he does gate, he doesn't make mistakes. He's on the inside with five points. So he's in touch with some of the big prize money remember there is extra money right the way down to fifth place the fifth place rider gets 200 pound the winner of course on a thousand so it's still worth racing for the minor places even if you're not uh, 
on the leaderboard. So John Davis on the inside. Then we have Chris Morton, who's livening up a bit. He has four points so far. Michael Lee unbeaten on nine. And Steve Bastable on the outside has one point so far. Heat 13, Lee in grid three. Davis on the inside is a quick starter. Chris Morton is always a pretty competitor. Heat 13. Davis and Lee, and Lee shots across there onto the line in the third place, just moving around the outside. It was Steve Fastable, but uh, well, he is getting a little bit sticky as Michael Lee leaves. Davis is second in third place now, Chris Morton, and really it's getting a little bit of a farce now because it's just impossible to get by after the first corner. Gating now imperative. Michael Lee made the start here. Merciless at the first corner. John Davis is in second place and he'll be anxious to hang on in there because he can still be in the top five placings which would bring extra prize money into the last lap. Remember they're all really top class performers. The elite of Speedway taking it very steadily. It is a really testimony to their skill and ability that they can still go as quick as this in these conditions. Michael Lee wins. Second place, John Davis. Third place, a long way back, was Chris Morton, who must have got a faceful on the first turn. And last place was Steve Bastable. Michael Lee, that's four wins, so he's putting the pressure on his other co-leaders, Dave Jessup and Dennis Sigalos. But I'm afraid the question must now be asked just how much longer we can go on in this wet because conditions now are deteriorating quite dramatically. Here's the lineup for heat number 14. Martin Simmons on the inside, Andy Graham, Phil White there in grids two and three, and Dennis Sigalos. Now he's the one we've got to watch on the outside because he needs a win here to go back up to share the lead. He's flying out of the outside grids. Let's see if he does it again. Yes, he has. Again a start from Sigalos and I think the others are going to have to really do something special to catch him now. Second place is Simmons, third is Phil White. Phil White, the gallant Phil White, it must be said. But there's Dennis Sigalos, unbeaten, and uh, well, as conditions well are not getting any better, we look up our program and see that he has to meet Michael Lee and Dave Jessup in what is scheduled to be the last race of the night, and that should be some climax. David Jessup moving up for heat 15. He knows that Sigalos and he knows that Michael Lee have already won their fourth outing. This is his scheduled fourth program ride. He must win it to keep up with them and then face a showdown in the last race program on this evening's race card. And in heat number 15, he's got one or two lively customers on his inside. You'll see David's on the outside here. There is the lineup. Bobby Schwartz, no mean performer, with a win in a second place and an exclusion. Scott Autry, grid two. Kai Nimi in grid number three with four points. And Jessup, again, will be looking to his razor-sharp reflexes and that tremendous starting ability to get him clear up to the first corner because it's virtually impossible to come from the, from the, uh, the back from behind once you get behind. Heat number 15, watch for Jessup on the outside and just watch for Bobby Schwartz because he'll put himself around at the first corner if he gets up with the lads too on the inside. And it is in fact Schwartz who gets away. Schwartz leading it. In second place it is Jessup. In third place it is Autry. And now Jessup trying to run up under Schwartz. And he's in trouble there. And Jessup's going down and he's brought down Schwartz as well. And that just shows how dodgy it is out there. 
because David Jessup made the dive, Schwartz refused to be moved. Bobby is up, so too, I'm sure, will be Dave Jessup. Up he gets as well, and it's going to be interesting to see what referee Lou Strip makes of that one. Well, let's have a look at this one. You can see Schwartz made the start now. He's leading now. Watch Jessup tries to run up the inside of him. He's gaining on him up the inside as they move into the corner. There's the incident, and Jessup lost control and gave him a nudge. It definitely was DJ to blame, and he really must come out as the prime cause of that one being stopped. Well, there is Dave Jessup in the pits. You can see absolutely covered in mud. Not looking at all happy because uh, that exclusion and the referee has said no way he'll go back in as the cause of the stoppage. And that really must have cost him his chance in this Berger Grand Prix final. And uh, there is Bobby Schwartz, the unwitting victim of all the aggro. Bobby's had a spectacular night this evening because he was brought down by Michael Lee. At least it looked that way on our replay in his opening ride. And then he was brought down by Dave Jessup, so the Kings Pair seem to be gunning for Boogaloo. And that one really does look as though it's clogged solid. It's a long track Czechoslovakian Yawa machine. And Bobby having a bit of trouble getting it to kick. Dave Jessup, just before we show you that, what was your version of it? As Why did it happen? Well, actually, I was obviously second chasing Bobby there, going down the back straight. And, uh, well, going into there with uh, a very, very dirty face and face mask and goggles, and with the extra lights due to the television were sort of pointing straight in the eyes and as I got to the corner I wasn't too certain if uh, if anybody sort of slid off or and Bobby sort of closed the gap and there was, wasn't enough room visually. Well, we'll show you exactly what happened now having got your version here you go what about this Dave? Well yeah, as you can see that I've come up the inside on well an unused piece of the track shall we say and I've got on the inside of Bobby here and you know at the moment we're going in nicely you know but all of a sudden I think I'm not certain if it's if the corner's there or not, you know, and I've put my leg inside the track. I wasn't actually the first to fall. I've obviously locked it up there, you see, and just about gone. And now Bobby's gone on, and he come down. Luckily, neither of us were hurt, and well, I suppose he couldn't really exclude anybody else other than me. Three riders only, though, in heat 15 for the second time of asking. Bobby Schwartz on the inside. Next to him, Scott Autry. On the outside is White's now Kai Nimi. Schwartz made a super start before all the fuss and bother on the first time of asking. Let's see if he can repeat that. The bike did seem to be clogged up a bit after the spill. But again, it's another tremendous start from Schwartz. In second place it is Autry, in third place it is Nimi. And Bobby Schwartz confirming that uh, come hell or high water doesn't slow him up. Schwartz moved from Cradley Heath to Reading for an £8,000 transfer fee. In fact, the deal was done the night of the Daily Express Spring Classic here back in March, our first television coverage of the year. He really has been a key figure in Reading's championship push this year. Tremendously popular character, determined, a showman, great guy for the races. And a big favourite of the British fans. And we reflect that controversially excluded in his first ride and this is going to be another win for him and apart from that exclusion he might well have been up there with the lads because now he has scored eight points from three starts remember there is additional prize money for the first five places so Bobby may well be among it second place there was Scott Autry the holder well out of contention looking at a shadow of himself this evening and third place was Kai Neeby but Bobby Schwartz still in touch with the big money well, the rain is still coming down, as you can see, absolutely in stair rods. And uh, we keep our fingers crossed. We must say that the Wimbledon track is holding up remarkably well, which is a credit to Cyril Maidman and his track staff here at Play Lane. You can see one or two surface puddles beginning to form, but at the moment, it looks as though we're moving up now to the last quarter of this 1980 Berger Grand Prix final. I think they might just about struggle through. Bobby Schwartz, he's on the outside and that has looked uh, infinitesimally the better gait as the racing has got slower and the track has got wetter and wetter and it uh, 
must be said now that the referee Lou Strip has just publicly commended all the riders for continuing in these almost impossible conditions. They really have been heroes, each and every one. There's the lineup with uh, Carter, Davis, and Schwartz, as you can see, all very much in touch with the extra prize money that goes right down to fifth place, remember. Starting really is all important. They seem to just be splitting up into two groups here. The two riders on the inside, Carter and Simmons, and Davis and Schwartz teammates are ready on the outside. Heat 80. And it is Schwartz who gets away from the outside. Second place is Davis. Third is Kenny Carter. But it's Bobby Schwartz from the USA who leads it as conditions, as you can see, the spray there really. It must be impossible to see from the back. Is up front. We'll get a better view of things out there, but though of course the rain's coming down, so that's going to impel his vision as well. Bobby was excluded from his first ride, and he'll be cursing that because possibly cost him three points. He's going to finish on 11, and that's going to put him very much in touch with the top. And uh, that first race exclusion may have cost him dearly. A renowned wet track specialist Bobby Schwartz reveling in the mud, a real mudlark out there. Boogaloo Schwartz from California taking off his face mask. We've lost down there on the first corner. Kenny Carter is gone. John Davis almost goes on the top corner there. Bobby Schwartz goes happily over the line. He wins it. Second place was Davis. Third place, in fact, was Carter, it was Simmons we lost on that bottom corner. Almost impossible to pick him out in the mud. Dennis Sigalos, uh, it's all going to rest on this last heat, the 20th. How do you see it going? Well, hopefully I'll win it, of course, but it's going to be a real tough heat. It seems like every meeting, every big meeting I'm in, it always comes down to the last heat. But, you know, that's the way it goes, but hopefully I'll win it. I've been getting out of the gate fairly good, and hopefully I'll win it. You have been starting very well indeed. What are you putting that down to at the moment? Uh, well, just good reflexes, I would say. Uh, what is it like? Is it getting progressively worse out there? Uh, yes, it is. It's like a swimming pool right now. It's really, really muddy. When you go into the first corner, you just slide right off the line and you hit right on the outside. Uh, and just hopefully, you know, you, get, you, you make it in the front. If you get in back, you get half filled, then you can't see. Well, Michael Lee's been going well, as, uh, well in this meeting, so do you think it's all going to rest on the gating? Yes, I definitely think so. But Dennis Sigalos then seeking what could be the most important win of his international career so far. You must remember that he has considerably more qualifying points, and they do count. He has 24 against Michael Lee, who had an unhappy qualifying time, and he has seven. So really and truly, Sigalos must start favorite here. Dave Jessup, of course, has had three wins and an exclusion. And we must also look for Alan Graham on the outside because he'll be looking for points, because he's on nine points, and he could move up into second place overall or indeed third place we will only have a runoff if two riders finish identically on top scores with their premium points to count as well i know it sounds complicated i'm sure it's going to work out heat 20 there's the lineup so Garlos is in grid three michael lee's in grid two they're the two really it's all about whoever of those two wins it uh, could wrap up the title but lee if he wins because of his uh, low score in qualifying points, might still have the title snatched from him by Sigalos if he finishes in second or third. Very complicated. Let's see if we can sort it all out here without any recourse to the slide rules in heat 20. And it's a bit tight up to the corner, and Sigalos has got a knock there from Lee, and he's got to run it into the fence, and all goes down. Jessup leads it. Lee in second place, in third place it is Graham, and this really has put the can up the pigeons. A hair-raising first corner, Sigalos couldn't get the drop, Jessup now leads, leaves in second place, in third place it is Alan Graham. And this could mean a runoff by our slide rule reckoning because Sigalos is last and Jessup's in front. Jessup and Sigalos had identical premium points to qualify. So if it stays this way, it could 
could be a runoff for the title. Lee will be the overall winner tonight, but with those vital premium points that were scored in the qualifying run, and down there has got Alan Graham, and this could make a difference. Alan Graham has dropped on the bottom corner. Sigalos picks up a gift point here, and that could mean that he's won it. The red lights come on, they're on the last lap. Now then, how are we going to sort this little bundle of fun out? Well, there is Alan Graham, who fell going in to the first corner of the last lap. I think he's OK. Look at the mud on the man. He's absolutely covered. But that could mean a vital difference to the overall winner. Jessup was the leader. In second place, it was Lee. Now, they were on their last lap, so referee Lou Strip technically should declare that result. And there we'll wait just to see what he does decide. The result of that race will stand. That's a win for Dave Jessup. Second, Michael Lee. Third, Dennis Segalos. So there is the result on tonight's racing of this Daily Mirror Berger Grand Prix final. Michael Lee, the winner, on 14 points. Dennis Segalos from Hull on 13. Dave Jessup on 12. But remember, those premium qualifying points do count and do make a difference to the overall result of the 1980 Grand Prix because that's the situation. Dennis Segalos, thanks to the points he accumulated in the qualifying rounds, finishes overall with 69. Dave Jessup on 64 and Michael Lee, who had some...